Hello and welcome back everybody. We're glad to have you. This is Tim with the Bugglesberry Lemonade Podcast. I'm flying solo today, guys, and my lovely wife Lisa uh, will not be joining us today. She is at the beach and good for her. So I thought I would keep this a little simple. This will be a short podcast. I thought what I would do is just simply share my paranormal stories. Some things that have happened to me over the course of my lifetime. I just thought I would share them with everybody. And um, without further ado, thank you for joining us. And here we go. This happened to me probably, I guess, about nine years, eight, nine years ago. Um, Place that I was working at at the time, I I was working with a cemetery corporation. And this happened in in a cemetery. Um, One of the cemeteries that I was over had had a long-standing history of suicides in this particular um, cemetery. So what had happened was... I had walked out to kind of walk over the cemetery and check it for how clean it was and for anything that that needed to be done. Um, That was just my job at the time. And as I walked out, I I saw a lady, an elderly lady, who was um, over to the side putting flowers out. And um, she saw me and I saw her and I acknowledged by waving at her and she waved at me. And I was on my phone at the time, imagine that. And I looked down at my phone and I looked back up at her and she was gone. There was no one there. Um, I could feel the hair on the back of my neck stand up and I'm standing there trying to make sense of all this. And I began to realize she's not there. There was no car around. There was nowhere for her to be. Um... So it, it was one of those things that it, I instantly realized I needed to get out of there. Uh, she was just gone, completely vanished. Um, it wasn't like an evil experience. It wasn't like, oh, oh my God. It, it was more of those things. I just saw something. I'm not really sure what I saw. And I'm not really sure I want to see it again. Um, so I hightailed it back to my office. And uh, as I'm sitting there trying to collect myself in my office, some of the staff would come in and out. And, and one of the staff members asked, said, what, what's going on with you? you? You look like you've seen a ghost. Well, you know, guess what? I just did. And I, I told my story and... Uh, They began to laugh and share their paranormal stories. Um, Evidently, the the cemetery that I was at, and I won't mention it for a whole set of reasons. Um, Anyway, they began to share their paranormal stories with me as well. This location, at one point in time, had been a funeral home. So people that owned the funeral home also lived there. So they would live upstairs, and, and of course, the funeral home would be downstairs. And I know that may sound creepy, but that is, is actually the way a lot of that worked in, in North Carolina um, for years. It was just not uncommon for the family to live upstairs and the funeral home be downstairs. That's just the way that it was. And um, it, it was one of those things they began to tell me about... Uh, a story in my particular office um, <laughs> at one point in time uh, a funeral home brought in some cremated remains uh, for a service and um, they brought them in and this was prior to my time and the, the remains were stored in the closet which was uh, and again this was before I went to work there but it, it would have been the closet in in my office at the time, which I didn't know. So this scared me too, <laughs> finding this out. And um, it, 
they began to tell me that the cremains were brought in and um, placed in this closet. And later in the evening, as staff was getting ready to go home, the door to the closet began to violently shake. And it, it, it was like the door was shaking. It sounded like someone was pounding on the other side. And um, one of the maintenance men got the nerve up to open the door. Um, and and there's nothing in there. There's just this, this box with the cremains. So he took the cremains out, set them on the desk, apologized, and said, you know, we know you don't want to be in there. We're going to leave you out here. We just... We just ask that you don't cause any more trouble. And that was the end of that. There was no more knocking or carrying on or anything like that. Um, another time, one of the admin that was working there um, needed some paperwork and came back to the location after hours in the dark. She went inside and retrieved her paperwork, got back in the car, and her daughter said, Mom, who is the lady upstairs in the window? Of course, that kind of skeeps out the, the admin. And she simply says, what are you talking about? I didn't see anybody. And uh, so she backs the car up and sees a woman in the, the, the top portion. Uh, it's a two-story building. In the upstairs portion of the office there's a woman standing in the, the window and as she continued to back up and her car lights you know are shining this woman simply disappears and is is gone no rhyme or reason to who this person is nothing but they they were in, in gone and um it that is kind of spooky too because we're we're working in a building that that all these things have happened in and it, it was just stories all the time and that 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 was just crazy and um it, it was just crazy and an, another time too uh one of the employees who who was an admin at at that time um <laughs> was was working late at night and um started having issues with a, a printer and um this particular printer, uh, she became upset with it, and a few choice words, nothing really bad because of who she is, um, just a good good Christian woman. And anyway, long, long story short, uh, according to her, the printer came up off the table right in front of her and was flung across the room. Um, that in itself is, is very scary. That, that's one thing there that I, I'm glad I never saw anything like this. But this particular individual saw that. Um, there were other instances out there. Uh, things would get moved from one spot to another. Um, nothing so much in the way of a feeling an evil presence or anything like that. It's just some things were mischievous. Some things were just there. And it's one of those things where... You, you, you know, you think about the, the place as a whole. It's a cemetery. There are a lot of people that have been buried out there. There's a lot of energy in a cemetery. Um, you, you know, people come out there, they mourn their lost loved ones. And um, that, that's just a heavy, heavy energy. It's overwhelmingly sad. And I think sometimes that energy gets stuck there. Like I said, at this particular cemetery, there were a lot of, um, for whatever reasons, people would choose to um, have their own demise in these cemeteries. Um, and, I, and I think that energy, and this is just my belief, but I think that energy would get trapped there. And it stays there, almost like a loop in time. And sometimes that energy comes to light and is relived. And, and I think that's some of the things that, that was happening at, at the time in this particular location. Um, as I would travel around to some of the other cemeteries, uh, certainly there, there was another cemetery that, that, that I was over that was haunted. 
Uh, there was talk of she was referred to as the the little lady, old lady in black. Um, she would frequent the kitchen area. I never saw her, but a lot of the staff did see her, and so they they would say that she would just be there in the corner, and then would just dematerialize and be gone. And um, that certainly that I mean that's just scary. It's just spooky. It's just one of those things that you know you're not expecting anything like that. Um, that was really one of my besides the stories I shared with you in my personal experience, that's really the only experience I ever had at the, the, the cemetery, one of the other cemeteries I was over, which was in the Burlington area. Uh, they would report things happening there. Doors would open, uh, sinks would cut on and off, uh, doors would open and close, like I said. Uh, things would be moved from one end to the other footsteps could be heard coming down the hall this particular cemetery um, used to be an old gas station and it had been converted um, there is even a picture that was taken in a mausoleum and if I can find it I'll share it with you and you can clearly see what what looks like a figure standing inside um, this chapel mausoleum at night it is late late at night and you can definitely see what seems to be a shadowy person there that you could see completely through. And um, that in itself was pretty pretty unnerving too. Um, and, and so you, that you just never know. But that, that was very unnerving as well. And folks, we'll take our first commercial break and we'll be back in two minutes. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, but moving on from that, I, from the cemetery, I'll tell a, another story here too as well. Um, you know, in my lifetime, I've had several things that have happened to me. And um, I appreciate you guys who follow us and listen to the podcast. I, I'm sure a lot of you um, have listened to the, the time that we had my mom on as a guest and the stories that she shared. Um, which were pretty interesting. So I'm going to share a story now that um, happened to me uh, when I was working in, in the furniture business. And um, the, the, the fellow I'm going to talk about as well, I hope to have him on in a, in a further, a future podcast uh, and have him share his own paranormal stories because he's had a lot he actually grew up in a haunted house so i'm hoping to to have him on as a future guest but i'd started working at this uh, furniture place uh this furniture store um is sleep number store and um i closed up one night well if you've ever been inside a, a sleep number store you you know that they're small they're not big places at all and um the the part of the lockup is um you, you would secure everything in the back um go to the front of the store after you'd arm the building in the back go to the front of the store so that you could kind of check everything on your walk out because you had so many minutes before the alarm would activate so you, you, you got to judge yourself and you, you knew how much time it would take you to get from point A to point B and be out of the building. And so I, I had done this several times and I was securing everything in the back and it turned all the lights out. And, and, you know, it's an empty building. It's a liminal space at this point. You know, it's it's done its job for the day. It's time for us to move on and the place goes dark and silent. So cut everything off, and you always get this this eerie feeling uh, in a situation like that. You, if you're in a building or a store, and there's it's busy during the day, people are in or out. Uh, there's noise, there's traffic, talking, all kinds of things. And all of a sudden, it's dark in the building, and it's pitch black, and you can hear the crickets chirping. There is no noise it's, it's kind of eerie and I know you know what I'm talking about well as I got ready to to leave 
you know, of course you, you start to feel that uh, little uneasy feeling, but like I said, it's, it's dark outside. You're the only one in the building. Everyone's left for the day. Um, the store music isn't playing anymore. And, and it's just pitch black. Oh, well, not quite pitch black, but it's dark. And as you get that, that uneasy feeling, you're unsettled, you just want to basically get out of there. And so I'm heading to the, to the front door to lock the door. And as I get up by the front door, of course, you know, there's display beds up by the front. There's a woman standing there. She's an elderly woman. Short, maybe five foot tall, wearing glasses, dark hair, and she's standing there, and she is is real. I mean, I'm looking at her. I'm not seeing through her. Um, to me, she looks like a a flesh and blood person. And so, ma'am, this is what I said to her. I said, ma'am. Uh, I'm sorry I, I didn't hear you come in because normally when someone would come in the front door of bell ring, I, I didn't see you. I'm, I'm so sorry, but but I've locked everything down. I'll be glad to reopen everything up for you. Is there something I can help you with? The lady never says a word. She slowly turns, looks me dead in the eye. Pun intended, I guess looks me dead in the eye and vanishes. The feeling of fear and dread that came over me at this time was so overwhelming. I, I thought I was going to piss on myself. I, I mean, I was scared. And um, this experience happened well before any of the cemetery experiences happened I'm I'm kind of telling backwards uh if you're looking for chrono chronological order I, I'm scared and it, this woman is it's gone I literally watched her fade away directly in front of me I can feel the chills coming over me now re relaying this story I mean I'm scared so she disappears or lock up the store and I get out of there. I mean, I haul ass out of there. I'm gone. And a few days later, I, I'm working the day shift and I'm working with the, my buddy that I was talking about earlier. And, and I just simply say, Hey man, I need to ask you something. And I guess he could tell by the seriousness in, in my voice, my tone, he just looks at me and he says, you saw her, didn't you? I said, you mean the old lady at the front of the store? And his reply was, yeah, the old lady at the front of the store. And and again, he and I both are experiencing chills. <laughs> you know? And he describes his experience to me. And he describes the exact same lady. He saw the exact same thing, whatever it may be. And um, we're just standing there looking at each other. And that kind of broke the ice for us. Uh, we became really, really good friends. We shared a lot of things. Um, and I, like I said, I hope to have him on the podcast in a, in a future episode. But that was my experience working there. Um, I remember, um, and again, I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm, I'm kind of... Uh, free flow in here I, I decided I wanted to do this without a script um, without a workup um, there really won't be much of an intro for this um, I just wanted to kind of come off the top of my head and share my stories with you um, almost in a manner to where if you and I were having a conversation so I'm just sharing these stories as they come to mind and um, that that happened there and, and it was scary. Um, the next story I'd like to share with you, and my wife Lisa and my mother both can vouch for this, uh, and we did mention this a little briefly on the, the, the podcast with my mom when we did the interview with her, uh, which is one of our very early 
podcasts. And if you'd like to see it, we'd we'd love for you to see it. It's 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 on here in 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 the catalog, and you're more than welcome to to view it. Please do. Uh, and guys, again, thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my wife's heart, for for standing by us and being with us. And and guys, we know sometimes we put out some good content. Sometimes it could have been better, and and we understand that. And and but thank you for sticking with us. Uh, but this story happened to to myself, my wife Lisa, and my mother. Um, as you, some of you know that listen to the podcast regularly, you know my mother lives with us. Well, at a at another house that we were living at, we had moved in. And it was an older house, and um, we'd lived there maybe about a month, and and we started noticing some little strange things here and there. Um, one night, our little dog at the time, Lexi, um, God rest her soul, such a sweet baby. Um, she's standing, looking down the hallway. She's just sitting down, looking directly down the hallway. And she's intent on whatever it is that she is looking at. And so I, I go to to see what she's so interested in, what she's so intent on. Nothing. There's nothing there. Don't see anything. But uh, she didn't acknowledge me. She didn't look up at me. She didn't flinch. And her ears were perked up. And I have learned over time, if you have an animal that, re- that reacts a particular way when in a situation like that, you know, if they're particularly still staring off, they're seeing something. You don't have to believe that way. That's fine. I don't, I don't really care. It's how I believe. And um, she's staring off into space. Well, this happened several times. Uh, then it began to happen that the, the bathroom light in the bathroom (laughs) it would have to be the bathroom light wouldn't it it began to to flicker to turn off and on on its own and this was extremely unnerving um then we would notice as we would sit in the living room or if, if we were in bed or whatever we began to hear what sounded like somebody walking in the in the in the attic you could literally hear footsteps in the attic and um, you you know you're hearing this uh, it's late at night and this would usually happen between 1 a.m. and you guessed it 3 a.m. here's somebody walking in the attic and uh, of course as far as we, you, you know, you go and investigate, there's nobody up there. Nobody up there. Um, then we started to get sick in this house. Um, Lisa would, would tend to have headaches. My mom would start. It affected my mom more than it affected any of us. And she, she started to get sick. And um, I believe that was due to mold. Uh, growing in this particular house um, but she she would get sick and get sick and get sick and, and it didn't affect me as bad I would get sick from time to time uh, but but the lights uh, in the bathroom that that got where that would even start to happen in the daytime we had it looked at no short nothing something just going on and uh, so we decided to move. We we left, and uh, when we moved to where we are now, uh, and we've been here for years and years, uh, everybody's health improved. No lights are flickering. Um, no no sounds in in the in the the attic. Nothing. And so we were kind of glad to to get away from there, and that. That was just really scary, and um, I know for those of you who who had listened to the podcast with my mom, we had talked about uh, at a place that she stayed, she she would hear uh, what sounded like someone walking up on uh, 
the deck and knock on the door. Um, heavy booted, walking up on the deck, knocking on the door. And she told me about this several times. This is before she lived with me. Well, one one night I spent the night with my mom. I mean, and I, I'd went to bed, and the bedroom that I was in was in the, the front part of the house. I'm closest to the deck. And I'm setting up um, late, uh, just reading. And um, I hear... Well, it sounds like somebody step up on the porch and they knock on the door. And I could feel the goosebumps gather up and I can, you know, and I'm instantly gearing up. And, and you know, normally, like I told you in some of the other stories, fear comes to mind. But in this particular instance... I was mad. I, I was angry. Like, who who are you to come knock on the door at this time of night? And I and I remember this very well. Um, this was about one thirty, two o'clock in the morning in that time frame. I look out the window. There's nobody there. Um, I actually walked outside with my my pistol. Nobody there. I go back to my bedroom um, and I'm wound up. I mean, like I said, I'm not scared. I am. I am angry. And sure enough, about an hour later, those same heavy boots walk up on the deck and knock on the door. And my reaction time to look out the window is very fast because of where I'm located and where my vantage point is I can see directly out the blind to the porch to the deck there's nobody there nobody and um that that happened one more time that night and um that, that was just the strangest thing um I'm not sure what was going on there but she heard that and I heard it heavy footsteps followed by a knocking on the door and uh just completely unnerving but but that happened to my mom and that happened to me as, as well um just a scary scary situation and guys if if any of you've experienced anything like this please drop it in the comments we'd love to hear from you you know if you've got a story that you'd love to share with us Drop us an email, bucklesberrylemonade at gmail.com. We would 100% love to, to hear from you. Okay, We'd love to share your story. We'll give you full credit and everything. Um, the only thing that we ask is, is well, n no bullshit. Okay, <laughs> Send us something um, that, that this happened to you. Okay, uh, Nothing made up or anything like that, but this happened and um you, you know that only happened the one time that i was there at my mom's house but that did that did happen and i and i will say um when i think about that i often look back and i wonder why was my reaction what it was you know and i asked my mom about the same thing and uh my mom's very even keeled about things like this she does not rattle easy she said the same thing. She was angry. So what was happening there? Was something paranormal happening that was affecting us? Was whatever this was, uh, was it trying to elicit those emotions in us? And I think so. I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, that happened. Very scary. Um, guys... We're heading into our next commercial break, and we'll be right back after these messages. And welcome back, everybody. Thank you for uh, continuing to stick with us through the commercial break. Uh, I am Tim Eubanks. I am co-host of Bucksbury Lemonade Podcast. As I said earlier, my lovely wife, Lisa, uh, has the night off. Uh, she's enjoying herself at the beach. And uh, guys, again, thank you 
uh, for being with us. Please be sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Tell everybody about us. Um, some of our other platforms, we have merch available. Um, not so much on um, uh, the YouTube platform yet because we're still trying to build that platform. Uh, so again, if you like this, please like it, share it, subscribe, tell a friend, uh, help us grow. And uh, we do uh, love you guys and appreciate it so very much. Uh, before we went into the commercial break, I was telling you guys about my experience at my, my mom's and the knocking on the door and the, the emotions um, that, that that elicited. And uh, I, I, whatever the, 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 that spirit was or that apparition or ghost or demonic activity, whatever that may have been, I think it, again, wanted to solicit that response in us, that, that, that anger. And, um, but that, that's what happened there in that situation. And, um, as I said here, thinking back, I remember once as a teenager, um, I was working in a facility that we had to have locked down and we had to be out of the facility, uh, no later than nine o'clock at night, um, for the overnight crew to come in and, um, I remember one night I was locking it down because I had been put in management even as a teenager. Yay me. And um, as I'm trying to lock everything down, the row of overhead lights, uh, I would cut them off and it would come back on. And um, as I was walking down the hallway, this entire series of lights that are overhead, as I'm walking, uh, the last time, because like I said, I cut them off and come back on, and they're all on at this point. I'm walking to the other end of the hall to get to that light switch, and the lights, overhead lights, start to go over, go off one section at a time. One, two, three, four, five. Almost like as I walk underneath them, they would go off. And that that scared me you know i was annoyed that the lights kept coming on because i thought somebody was playing a prank on me and then i slowly began to realize for that wing that hallway um, i'm the only one on it and so something was happening there um almost like a a, a poltergeist activity very frightening, very scary, not really sure what was going on there. Um, but I was a young man at that point in time. I'm only about 17 years old. And that is, you know, happening to me. Um, you guys also uh, remember my other story I shared with you on the Garden Angel podcast about me um, um, being injured in a car wreck and someone reaching into the car and helping me um and then when the emts and everyone gets there this person's gone and i'm being told um you're by yourself nobody's here you're by yourself and uh that that was a spooky spooky feeling um <sighs> this next story i'm very reluctant to share it um because I, I've never shared it on a podcast. Only a few of my friends know about it. And um, I classify this as a supernatural experience. I don't think it was a ghostly experience. And it'll make sense as, as the story unfolds here in another second or two. So, at this point in time in my life, I'm probably 22, 23, 24, between 21 and 24, and I'm going through a really hard time in my life. Um, I'm separated from my then wife at that time. Um not really sure what I'm going to do. Uh, 
My future is very uncertain at this point. Um, I'm struggling in a, in a lot of ways. So I go and spend the night uh, with a very good friend of mine. His name's Dave. He's like a brother to me. Um, I do not know that I've ever told Dave this story, so he'll hear it here on the, the podcast. He um, had left, uh, and it seemed like he'd went to go on a date. And guys, bear with me, because this story here, uh, like I said, I was between 21 and 24. I'm 57 now, so we're talking a long time ago. He um, goes on a date, and I'm drinking very heavily, and the night wears on, and I'm drinking And uh, I go to his bedroom. And I know that's where he keeps his um, gun. And I make a decision. I can't do this anymore. And in my drunken haze in the cloud that has come over my mind I know that I have to to do this and I sat down on the bed and I thought okay I need to write a note and I thought nope I'm not gonna write a note reach into his drawer pull it out rack it make sure the chamber's loaded <laughs> put the barrel in my mouth and decide I'm not going to suffer anymore I'm not going to hurt anymore I close my eyes I close my eyes tears are streaming down my face and I begin to scream with the barrel in my mouth because I know at this point in time it's time to go and I'm, I'm getting my courage up to do this and from the other side of the room, I hear a voice. It's a child's voice. It's a little boy's voice. And he simply says, No, Daddy. Daddy, don't. A wave swept over me. I was not drunk anymore. I was stone cold sober. And I sat there and I took the gun out of my mouth and I set that gun down and I'm looking around me. And I realized at this point in time, you know, the Bible tells us uh, about the principalities of the air. And that, you know, we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities of the air. And it dawns on me that there's a battle being waged for my soul at this point. Because I didn't have any children at that time. I didn't have my first child until I was 32 years old. And I realized in my stone cold sober state, that something has just happened and I don't understand it but I realize I'm not to do what I had planned to do put the gun back in the drawer and I shut that drawer like I said I'm between 21 and 24 life went on I got remarried and at the age of 32 I was gifted with the first of my three blessings in my children. And this little boy, my son, just, you know, all three of my children mean the world to me, but I, you know, never had a child. And so this meant the world to me, to be able to hold my son. And as he began to firm, 
form sentences and begin to talk and be able to say things. I'm playing with him one day and he looks at me and he says, Daddy, I love you. And it dawns on me at that point in time. Sorry, guys. I just heard that voice again. And it dawned on me at that particular time in my life, the voice I was hurt that I'd heard all those years earlier was indeed the voice of my child, my son. And God allowed that to happen so that I would put that gun back in that drawer and shut that drawer, go, go to my bedroom at that time, lay down and go to sleep and wake up and fight and fight for another day. So guys, if you're listening to this, if you're within the sound of my voice right now and you're going through something similar, there is a better day. Okay? Morning may be all night coming, but the light will come in the morning if you will hold on. Pray. Ask for help. Seek guidance. Do whatever you need to do, but make sure you dig your toes in the sand and you fight and so I know without a shadow of a doubt the voice I heard was indeed my son and it brought me back from what was about to happen because it, it made me realize had that act happened I would have affected a generation and then another generation and then another generation and so Guys, those are my stories, and um, I saved this one for last because it, it's heavy, it's moving, you know, and it's one of those things to where you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe anything that I've just shared with you. You can laugh about it. You you can do whatever, you know. I was there. I know it happened. Um. We live in a strange, strange place. It's filled with excitement. It's filled with wonder. It's filled with life. And it can be filled with death. And there is something that happens afterwards. And that's why I saved this particular story to, to the very last. Um. And if you've had a similar story to this and you'd like to share it, please so, do so in the comments. If you'd like us to, to, to share one of your personal stories on our podcast, please email us. Again, uh, BucklesburyLemonade.com, excuse me, BucklesburyLemonade at gmail.com. You can also visit our website, www.BucklesburyLemonade.com. We'd love to have you. Um, but those guys are my stories. Um, these are events that have happened to me. Um, I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to listen. Uh, again, please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you so much from the bottom of uh, myself and my wife Lisa's heart for, for listening to us. And uh, we appreciate you guys so very much. And with that, guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope uh, you've enjoyed this podcast. I hope in some ways this made you think a little bit. And I, and I hope uh, you got some entertainment out of it on some level. Till next time, guys. I'm Tim Eubanks with Bucklesbury Lemonade Podcast. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Take care.